I'm Mike Miller. I'm the planning director for the city of Montpelier. And tonight we are doing the first kickoff of the city plan update. We're not live yet. Not live yet. OK. Let me know when we're ready. Now we are. Now we're ready. All right. So uh, hi, Donna. So I am Mike Miller. I'm the planning director for the city of Montpelier. And, uh, we are here, the Planning Commission, this is a Planning Commission meeting, and we are here tonight to kick off the city plan update process. I'm going to go through a quick PowerPoint and review, get everybody up to speed where we're at, what's going on, and uh, we got a pretty small crowd. I don't know if we want to introduce ourselves, certainly at least the Planning Commission, identify if you're a Planning Commissioner. Sure. I'm Aria Kassam. I'm a Planning Commissioner. Joe Castellano, president of uh, Montpelier on Saving Street. And Gabe Lajanas on the Planning Commission. Mike Pitch, I am the director of the Vermont Crafts Council. I have an office down here at the Center for Arts and Learning, and I'm a Montpelier resident. Uh, Sean Lanyon, I'm uh, member of the Planning Commission. I'm Maria Arzabas, a member of the Planning Commission. Brian Mills, Planning Commissioner. Peter Kalman, I live in Montpelier, I'm a housing advocate. Jennifer Roberts, I am a resident of Montpelier. Don Gate, resident of Montpelier. All right. And I want to thank Maria. We are here at the Wilder Arts Center, and Maria has generously opened up her space to let us uh, have the meeting here. And part of that is because one of our topics uh, that we're addressing tonight is uh, arts and culture. So we kind of wanted to start out and kind of respect that and take advantage of, of some great art space we have here in Montpelier. So uh, I'm going to go over a couple of things relatively quick. So it's a little bit of background and history, what we've been doing for the past seven years, eight years now on, on the city plan, uh, and then explain what's a city plan, why is it important, uh, talk about briefly uh, three chapters, two parts. That will make a little bit more sense when we get there. Uh, and then our overall input process, the big picture, this is going to be a six, nine month process, and then what we're going to be doing tonight. With a small crowd, we may go and kind of change, change things up and, and do it standing here. Rather than having everybody break up into groups, maybe we'll just keep bringing up the various boards and talking about them separately. So background and history. So for the last 50 years, maybe more, 60 years, uh, it, this document that we are updating has always been known as the Montpelier Master Plan. And planners and landscape architects and everybody always came up and said, but it's not a master plan. It's a term of art. Master plan is a term of art. And what we have is a city plan. It's not a master plan. So for this update, we are actually going to be changing the name for the first time in 60 years. It is going to be the Montpelier City Plan as opposed to the Montpelier Master Plan. But you'll hear people refer to it as the Master Plan, and that's why. Uh, our current plan was most recently updated in 2010, and we also did an amendment in 2017. Uh, they're valid for only eight years. so. Uh, at the time we were updating the zoning, we needed to make sure we had the plan in place to make sure we could do the zoning. So we had to do an update in 2017. Our current plan is good until the end of 2025. Hey, Carlton. Um, so we updated this plan into a completely new format and content. So we did not take the old plan and just revise it. We put the old plan aside and we started all over with a new, completely new format and content. Content, and this process started in 2016, developing goals and strategies. So the way we went about developing this plan was to break it into its 10 or 12, it's got 11 chapters, break it into the various chapters, and to look at each topic with the committee that works on it. So the housing committee would work on the housing, uh, energy committee would work on energy, historic preservation with historic, and so on. That took a lot of time. And so meeting with those individual committees, that's, that's what has been going on since 2016. We did a lot of that work. And then starting in about 2020, 2021, we started working on the second piece, which is the web-based plan part. So we've got these chapters, these storyboards. If you've been online, you've seen there are various storyboards. And then there are these boards here, which also show the implementation strategies. So that is the other, the other piece. 
So this is the product of all those committee meetings with the arts committees and the historic commission and the housing committee. And what's online is what is the result of working with the planning commission, working with their consultant. Uh, the new format uh, for, so we ended up with a new format for aspiration, goals, and strategies with a goal of having a more actionable plan. So one of the goals we wanted coming out of these, this side, these pieces, is a more actionable plan, not just um, an aspirational plan. I mean, it has aspirations in it, but we didn't want to have a plan that focused on um, we want to encourage accessory apartments. Well, we don't want to just encourage accessory apartments. Encouraging them isn't going to actually make any. What are we going to actually do? So there, what you'll find in here for strategies are actual actionable items and not just encouraging or supporting or um, those types of words that don't actually make something. We want to actually say, OK, if you want to encourage accessory apartments, how are you going to encourage them? Uh, we're going to do tax breaks. We're going to change regulations. Lots of things we can do. That's what you see here are this, this new format to make a more actionable plan. And I'll go with that. So um, what is a city plan? Why is it important? Uh, under state law, city plans must be consistent with the state planning goals. They must be compatible with the regional plan. They must be compatible with neighboring community plans. And they have to contain 12 required elements. So, we are taking care of all those requirements to make sure it actually meets those statutory requirements of what it means. If you want to have a plan, you have to follow the state rules for what's included in a plan. But you're actually not required. No community is required under state law to have a plan. But if you don't have a plan, uh, you can't update or adopt any regulations. Uh, so you can't have zoning regulations if you don't have a plan. Uh, you won't be allowed to participate in Act 250, so you can't participate in state proceedings like Act 250 or Section 248 is the same similar process to Act 250, but it is for certificate of public good things like uh, solar panels and solar fields and wind farms. So that's Section 248. But if you don't have a plan, the city as, the city as an organization can't participate in that process. Um, and then there is also a necessary requirement for a lot of grants and um, other programs that the state offers. So if we don't have a city plan, you lose out on the opportunity to apply for grants. So how can we, um, how can the city plan be used? Uh, they're really a foundational document and uh, they can be a long-term guide a basis for decision making, programs and investments, uh, it's an action plan with implementation steps. There are lots of ways we can use a plan. Um, and most of these will end up coming into play in, in our plan. Uh, it's a basis for municipal regulations. It's a source of information. Uh, it's also a place where we have a lot of smaller plans. Uh, and a lot of times you need a place where you can pull these plans together where you can start to recognize how they, uh, how they interact with each other. And it's a tool for coordination, and it's a standard for regulatory proceedings. So there are lots of ways that we can use the plan. And so what were our goals, uh, Planning Commission's goals? So we wanted the storyboards uh, to give the public and decision makers the backgrounds on a topic, what are our goals generally, and what are we going to do to achieve them? So the storyboards part, that's the part that's online, those are the, the, the web storyboards, those are meant to be your 50,000 foot explanation. If you're just online and you're Googling housing in Montpelier, we're hoping this is what would pop up, and you could get to read it and understand what are the issues, what are the topics, and what are we generally doing about it. The second piece, as I mentioned, were the strategies, uh, which are the detailed implementation steps and the actionable parts, the actionable pieces that are done to achieve those goals. And these are the much more specific pieces. Everybody's welcome to look at them, but we would really want to have the housing committee know and understand what our housing goals are and our strategies are, and they can start working to advance those goals. 
or historic resources or arts and culture or transportation or energy when those pieces come out. So the idea is we would hope that the council and the, the staff and the commissions and anyone interested in the public would really have a good understanding of what these implementation boards are. Um, but we understand that not everybody is going to maybe be interested in reading and understanding all those details. If they just want to have a general understanding, that's what our storyboards are, are trying to get across. So tonight's topics, as I mentioned, arts and culture, historic resources and housing. Um, so three chapters and two parts. So hopefully you've started to figure out a little bit. The three chapters are these three that are listed. The two parts are there's one part that is online, which is the, the storyboards. And you can see them on the city's website. If you go to the city's website, if you're seeing this online, uh, you can go to the city's website and scroll down to the bottom and there's a big box for the new plan. If you click on that, it will take you to the page where you can access the storyboards and these historic resources or and, and these um, implementation strategies. So uh, each chapter above has a storyboard and each chapter has implementation strategies. So we have six pieces that we're talking about tonight. Um, and all of them are on their website, um, but they will all eventually be on their own website. So right now they're just plugged into the city's website because the full um, web page, it is under development. We have the pieces, but we can't give you access to part of it. And so to avoid confusion, we just took those storyboards out and reprinted them in our city website. Um, each storyboard is in a web-based format has an introduction, plan context, um, synergies. So synergies are how plans relate to each other. So um, historic, uh, our ability to achieve our historic goals might be impacted by, um, might impact our ability to achieve our <coughs> energy goals because we start talking about replacing windows or replacing siding to insulate a building, well, that's going to damage the historic integrity. How do we balance these conflicts? Sometimes they work together. Your energy goal and your public transportation goal both work together. So uh, that's what the synergies looks at, are how these various plans relate to each other. Um, and each implementation strategy is also built the same way. It talks about aspirations and goals. And goals uh, are basically how we break aspirations into smaller bite-sized pieces. So we might have, uh, we might desire to have safe and affordable housing. But we're going to have one goal for safe housing and one goal for affordable housing because the tools we're going to use to make our housing safe are probably different than the tools we're going to use to make our housing affordable. They're all important, but the aspiration is big, and then we break it into smaller pieces. That's what you'll see as you look through the goals, is the goals are basically taking the aspiration and breaking them into slightly smaller pieces, and then the strategies are those actionable pieces to achieve the goals. And some strategies are new, some strategies are existing. As you look at the boards, you'll see um, Montpelier Cultural Plan is new for that one. So you'll see some of these are talking about, we need to do something new, Sometimes we need to do something different. We're already doing it, but we need to amend it or change it, and it'll say that. And sometimes it's just continue to do it. Um, the growth center program or the downtown program, we should just continue to do those programs because of the benefits they provide. We don't need to do them differently. We just need to do them. So the overall process, as I mentioned at the start. So there are 11 chapters total. And uh, we're going to try to do three at a time over the next four to six months. So these are the first three. Um, we're going to have this three, 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 two. So in six weeks, eight weeks, we'll do another three more chapters. Um, and then we'll do another three more probably late in the summer and then two more in the fall. And um, each of these will have at least three different input opportunities, um, plus comments online and through surveys. So as this ramps up, it's, it's kind of a slowly ramping up process. Evelyn is getting stuff moving. We're going to keep uh, having opportunities. So anyone who misses out on this one, it's going to be available for comment over the next four or five months. 
So, uh, and then we'll move into the next one. You can still comment on the old ones, but we're gonna move into the next set of three in six to eight weeks. Um, but I'll mention now, we had originally scheduled, for anyone who was thinking maybe I'll do Thursday, we had scheduled for this Thursday not being aware of the fact that it was corporate cup. So we're canceling Thursday's meeting um, and we're gonna reschedule it. So um, once completed the planning commission, so in the overall process, we do this three, 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 two process and we get ourselves to the, um, all the review is done, then the planning commission will review all the comments and make revisions to develop a final public hearing document. And that's when the planning commission would start warning and going into a public hearing where there'd be public, another round of public hearings by the planning commission and the city council. But at this point, we are really looking at trying to see where we are with this document. And I think we have some of that discussed more in the next slide. So the rest of tonight, uh, we had various stations. Like I said, we can do this because we don't have a, a large crowd. We can certainly go through, bring the boards up. We can talk about what's here. Um, we can look online at those documents as well, or we can still break out if that's what people want. Um, planning commissioners are here to take some notes and answer questions, but we're looking for your opinions. What do you like, not like, about the look of the various elements? Did, did we do a good job putting this together? Does it look good? Do the storyboards look good? Um, do these strategies look good? Do they make sense? Um, are they confusing? Uh, do you have specifically com specific comments about the content? So if you read through these things and you think, you know, this, this public art strategy is a bad idea, great, that's what we want to hear. We want to hear what's good, what's bad, what you like, because we're going to have to take all these comments and then sit down and balance them with all the other comments and make a decision later on in the summer as to what goes into the final draft. Um, and then do you have questions that we can answer for you? And if there's anything else um, that you think about later on, there's opportunities to email these comments and put things online. We're gonna do surveys. So we're really trying to maximize the opportunities over the next six months for people to, to get to provide comments. I think that's most of this, and I can take some questions or comments now, or we can figure out what we want to do next. Oh, just a quick comment. I know that um, you're focusing on historic resources, and obviously there was a focus in the previous zoning to have more housing concentrated downtown with some of the recent building and stuff like that. I wonder what the plans are to redesign or kind of implement more housing downtown or you know, these dense growth center areas that we've identified. Yeah, so the, the question, I don't know if it, some of it gets picked up, was about uh, balancing historic resources and, and, and our housing goals, uh, because we had a lot of goals for um, developing more housing in the downtown, and both of those uh, plans, the, the housing and the historic resources, were both developed before July. So. Uh, we may have to go through and reevaluate, rebalance some of these. Um, I, I don't know how much conflict there is um, with the historic, um, because we can still do a lot of infill other than what we learn now is we, we now don't allow the first floors to be converted from commercial to um, residential. Um, whereas before you would have been allowed to do that. So it will have some impact. The flood will have some impact. It already has impacted our regulations. Any other initial questions? Do so, want some time to look at the boards? Or? So we can, like I said, there are two parts. Um, one is the three story boards, or the, the three implementation strategies. Yep. Uh, I know that you have different priorities saying like, okay, cost is high, priority is high. And when you say like a high priority, are you saying something to implement within the next 18 months? Uh, do you have sort of, some sort of sense of a time frame? They didn't technically have time frames as much as 
how we would weigh those in relation to each other on what we wanted to work on first. Okay. And so, um, and, and initially we just had the implement, we just had what were the strategies, and it wasn't really till it came back to the Planning Commission that people said, well, if we're gonna make a strategic plan, everything can't be a high priority. So let's go through and start picking out which ones of these would be the ones we would really wanna put our effort in on first um, and kind of focus on those. And so in some, some comments people may have is they, they wanna see you know, a low priority moved up to a higher priority or vice versa. This, you made this a high priority, maybe it should be a low priority. Uh, cost was based on low cost was meant to be anything up to about, you know, one to five thousand dollars, relatively small cost. Um, the other one was uh, medium is about that ten thousand to one hundred thousand dollar range. That's a medium cost project. Something that's high cost is going to be more than one hundred thousand dollars. So that's kind of we had to put some numbers to it. So that was kind of our thought. Peter, is there going to be a full text um, printed or PDF version? of the chapters and the way there has been in the past, or is it all going to be uh, uh, the storyboards? Uh, it's all going to be storyboards. These will be printed. These, are, these will be a part of the, the document. So the implementation strategies will be PDF'd so they can be accessed. But there won't be chapters uh, with text the way there have been in the past? Uh, correct. It will be uh, it was um, based on my uh, recommendation to start was uh, looking at where other plans had been evolving around the country. And it hasn't happened in Vermont, but in you know, uh, Oklahoma City and Plano, Texas and a couple other places, uh, they were finding that Plans that were web-based plans, online plans, had more interaction, more downloads when they compared their former PDF plans. How many, how many downloads did we get compared to how many people were actually looking at uh, a web version? And they were finding there was better traffic, more traffic, and that was why they're moving in that direction. So that was why I made the recommendation, and the Planning Commission agreed, and we moved in that direction. If, if, if this is going to be uh, a live document that's going to be guiding us. Clearly, as we learned this summer, we haven't learned before, things change, and sometimes things change very quickly. It's very easy to change a PDF. It is much more difficult and more expensive to change a uh, web-based uh, version of this, as we've seen already, because it's taken you uh, almost two years to sort of get it up. I just wonder whether that, whether you might not want to have a written version of it as a backup that could be more flexible and keep, keep up to date. Because it, you, it, you have had it written. I've seen it. To, to, that's what these were based on. These were, you hired a consultant who looked at your written document and did this. And that brings up a second point. Who is checking the factual nature, the grammar, the whatever of, of, of this? I mean, these, this, these are consultants. They don't actually know our city. And I'm not sure they have proofreaders or copy editors, because there are some egregious errors. Like, what year did we buy uh, uh, Country Club Road? What year? 2022, right? It says yeah. 2021. On, on, on the storyboard. That's just one of the mistakes I found. Um, Peter, I'm, I'd love to hear if you have some like thoughts on, I think that's a good, I mean, I don't know Mike, if we are, have the ability to update the web-based plan, but I, I feel like generally web pages are easier to update actually than, than written documents, but I'd also love to hear like if you have suggestions on you know, ways that we could to have the, the document proofread or you know, something, whether you have a suggestion. Of well, I, I mean, I do, but by the way, all the, the editing a PDF is a lot easier than making a change on a 
a proprietary platform, you're going to have to go, um, unless Evelyn gets trained to do it herself, and she's just a part-time employee, and I don't know that she's going to have the time to do it, but maybe she would. Uh, it, it's, it's, not that, it's not as easy to make a change in, 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 on a platform like this as it is in Word, which is how you make a PDF. Well, I guess in my work, like, it is easier for us, you know, as an organization to make a change to a website versus a PDF, but I'm curious to hear what... Yeah, these, I mean, these are storyboards, so there does take another level of... It's, it's a different program than the standard program, but it's not that foreign. Um, it requires an ArcGIS license. The city has one, so these are built in... Uh, Esri is the company, and they have a product called uh, ArcGIS that kind of generates, you can do storyboards in. So this is kind of coming out of those, those types of programs. Uh, GIS, Geographic Information System, is a uh, generally used for mapping. Uh, so it's, it's a map-based, which is why if you see a lot of these, a lot of them kind of generate and go through maps as you're looking through them, because it really is a map-based uh, interactive geographic system. Um, but they found it also was helpful for being able to do these storyboards. And so we have the program, we can do it, um, and it's going to come down to, um, you know, when, when we want to do the changes. The hope I have for these, getting to Peter's point about making changes, is that um, in much the same way that we went through a very long process, a seven-year process to update the zoning, and the point we had was, once we get the zoning updated, we will continually be reviewing them, finding things that need to be fixed, bringing them back to council. And in the six years since we've adopted it, we've made seven amendments to the zoning. Um, my hope is the city plan, it took us seven years to do it. I don't expect us to take seven years to do it again. My hope is that once we've got the document, then we can keep coming back and saying, you know what, we had a flood this year. What do we need to review in our city plan and maybe we need a resilience chapter and we add a new chapter in maybe we have it in there but we need to make some changes and then we can go in instead of changing 11 chapters we find the chapter that needs to get fixed we review it and then everyone can have a really detailed conversation that's what we have now with the city plan with the city zoning is we make a set of very finite changes and everybody you know it the stuff doesn't get lost everybody gets a chance to comment on those specific changes. Do we want to change uh, country club road zoning? Um, and that's what we're talking about. We've got these trying changes and we have it. I think we could do the same thing with the city plan. Once we've got it up and running, we can really go through and have a nice detailed conversation about, okay, what are we going to do? Because we need to change our economic development plan or we need to change our resilience plan. Donna? Oh, the idea that goals and priorities and timing are the same that are not true to me. Like you can have a priority, but it may take many years to get there, but it's always hovering there for your focus versus you can have a lower priority that's maybe quicker to do. So I find the timeline on things different than the priorities. Is, is that the way you approach this? I'm just going back to this question. Uh, so the ones we had in here were just cost, priority, and partners. Just making sure that's what we're what we're in there. So we could add in timeline. We we had other columns. These were originally all in Excel files. Um, so there were a number of other columns that we said just let's not. We don't need to put all the information into these various tables. Let's let's focus on the important ones. We could put timelines in, into some of these um, if if we think this is you know how long will it take to do this. Um, we could we could add another column into that. So well, I guess my place when you make a priority, sometimes you have short-term goals within that long term, and that within itself sort of defines a, a timeline. Is that part is that integrated within? It's that it's not integrated in there right now, but it could be. Um, it would take us some time to be able to go through and add that factor into. Um, each one of the strategies, but it's not an impossible task, especially a lot of the ones that are continuing are ones that really have a timeline of zero. Yes. Uh, we're, we're already doing this. That's, that's a timeline of zero. And so we're really just talking about how long to amend this and how, how long to start this new program that we're talking about. So, Peter. Mike, I, could you answer the question of how 
How, what is your plan for catching errors and, and changing them? I mean, I, my suggestion would be you hire a copy editor and you hire a proofreader. Copy editor does fact checking, proofreader makes sure it's grammatically correct. And I mean, there, there are some clear inconsistencies between the, uh, the, uh, the goals here. One, one, one of the storyboards refers to goals, and they're not the goals that are there. I, that's something a copy editor would catch. Copy editor would catch that it wasn't 2021, it was 2022. The proofreader would catch, uh, well, for, oh, also, there are references in there to the housing task force. The housing task force doesn't exist anymore. Yep, and we're, so the, getting these uh, kicked off, because we, this had been, this is a process, we, we had hoped this process would be in 2020 or 2021. Um, so a number of these, yes, we're gonna find those and there's gonna be certainly another round of very careful editing and it may involve, you know, certainly working with, within the department, we have different people who are uh, very good who have not read and reviewed these or we could look outside um, to, to do the copy editing as well. But they will get a final review, but we needed to start the process with what we had, knowing that there are going to be errors and things that are gonna to need to be fixed, because the first thing we need to do is to make sure, are we on the right track? Um, you know, we don't wanna uh, spend another six months, eight months, making everything perfect to find out the public doesn't think this approach is the right approach. Uh, we really want to start with, okay, let's, let's start looking at where we're at um, and start making those, and making those notes. You know, what, what, did, we, what did we miss? Because we we finished that chapter up and we put that to bed two and a half years ago while we were doing these other pieces and we haven't gone back to, to re-review them. So, you know, clearly with the housing, if it's talking about housing task force, we've got to go to housing committee. And we've got to make a number of amendments. So uh, you are correct with that. Um, but we're also, like I said, looking to make sure we're on the right path. And if we're on the right path, then we can really start to refine these. And if we're on the wrong path, or if we know five chapters the public really likes, three chapters the public has issues with. Then we have to decide, do we go back and reevaluate those three chapters? Uh, do we think we're doing okay and we're just gonna go forward with them anyways? Those are the conversations the planning commission will have um, based on the input you, give, you all give us. So yeah. my, um, I understand the housing committee for, the, for housing and the historic preservation, for, but there are some very important committees that also ought to be considered, for example, the Social and Economic Justice Committee, have, have they, uh, advisory uh, committee, uh, the ADA committee, the Homelessness Task Force. These are committees where, where all, many of these chapters Im impact their purview. And um, for example, I felt that house, the housing chapter was kind of deficient in uh, talking about homelessness or even uh, economic inequality. So I would suggest that you engage these other committees where there are synergies or lack of synergies. Yeah, so uh, homelessness we did work with, but um, CJAC we did not. Um, and the other one I don't believe we, we did. ADA. ADA. ADA, yeah, that's a... Uh, uh, I mean, even, even something like Complete Streets or Tree Board, I mean, th we have a lot of committees, and I think th that would be a more effective way of engaging the community than putting out a notice that turned out five members of the community here tonight. If you really work through all the committees, not just the obvious ones, voila, you've got a whole bunch more people engaged. And we saw this two summers ago on Country Club Road. We had 50, 60, 70 people showing up for, for that because that was a very concrete issue that drew people. This is very abstract, but if you say to the tree board, hey, would you take a look at this and see whether this has any impact on what your, your goals are? 
they, they'll take a look because it affects them. Yeah, and we've worked, like I said, we have worked with a lot of, a lot of committees, you know, uh, cemetery committee, rec board. Um, there are a number of committees that we've worked with. Um, but the city of Montpelier has 22 committees <laughs> or more. So, yeah, we probably. So at least 22 people who might get engaged. Probably more like 44 and, or 112. And they have. Like I said, we have engaged a number of them. Well, maybe one idea is for the next meetings, we can make sure to copy. I mean, do we have the emails for the we, chairs for all the committees? Evelyn did send out notices oh, okay. to the various oh, committees, okay. but it's. But we, again, we're going to keep making more pushes. Um, you know, uh, this, was, this was the first one. We wanted to start to roll these things out. Probably a little easier to roll it out with a smaller group to get more interaction with folks. Um, and we certainly want to, over time, keep building this up and getting more and more input. And we're going to keep track of who's not here and who we haven't heard from. So, you know, if we don't have uh, any housing committee members, then we're going to do a special reach out to them or uh, historic. I know the historic folks weren't able to make it. Uh, a number of them are looking to try to participate in the uh, when we do the Zoom one. Um, they wanted to get they wanted to participate, but they're going to participate when we do the Zoom meeting. I Done. About the storyboards online. Is there an easy way to copy that so that I ultimately have like a printed copy of it? If I wanted to look at the words and read uh, it more easily. Possible. I'd have to ask. I'd have to ask how that prints out without doing snap, without there doing, without do doing, doing yeah. without if, doing. If there is, it would just be helpful to know. Yeah, if, they, if there's a, a way that can get. The yeah. storyboards are really hard to read. Oh, are they hard to read online? You can, you okay. Can Abstractly, if we're having a book, I read top to bottom and take the inspiration. It's just like you got to visually move around on it. Okay. I really get a single document. Yeah, I mean, it's great for a visual like this, but when you're trying to really dig Reading. into it online, especially, it seems like you know having both would be good, having a, a format to read. Yeah, these, these are PDF, and this, these will actually be in the when the web is done, you could download and, and print those out. We're going to have to probably um, reformat them for printout, simply because if you were to print this out on eight and a half by eleven, you wouldn't be able to read it. <laughs> so, so there will be a piece that has to be that way legally. We have to have a piece that is printable because these can be used in Act Two Fifty hearings. So people have to be able to um, point to either for or against, in support of my application, or uh, an, an opponent to a project can point to the goals or policies to go through and say, this is inconsistent with the goals and policies of the city plan. And the other small trivial thing about finding nope. that is the density. Uh, PDW does it all the time with lots of colors in their presentations, their slides, and you've got it here. But when you go to print that, that's a lot of ink. Oh. That's a lot of ink. So print just, just think about that. You can print in black and white. Even you print in black and white, then you have a background like that blue. Yeah, with the bottom, the, the background. It is, it is white in the background, which will help. <laughs> anyway, I'll just put that out there. If you need, you find a way to make it printable. Yeah, we are eventually going to have to do that for, for legal, legal reasons. Um, uh, Evelyn is trained, and she is doing all of the reviews to try to make sure that, and so is SE Group. They are the group that is doing the storyboard. So the storyboard part, um, they are all trained to make sure that there is an analysis they can do to make sure that they're uh, colorblind compatible. So we don't have issues running in where people miss out. Um, so there's a lot of ADA. Um, they're written in a format that meets the ADA requirements for, for web-based plans. But I think that this is, shows you there are all kinds of minds. Yeah. Some people need, can read a, a PDF text better than they can uh, do this. I mean, maybe you know, in Plano, Texas, they just have one type of person. I, I think it's really a mistake not to have a straight PDF version, both because it's easier to change and because some people, uh, I mean, you know, can read it better that way. I mean, I happen to be able to, you know, print it out, but it wasn't obvious how to do it. Oh, yeah. Look at the boards. Go in small groups. Or uh, we can do can it. Can I ask a general question? Sure. Oh, 
Um, how do we make sure, this has been seven or eight years, right, you guys are, so, and you said you want to make sure that we're on the right track, and how do we make sure that we're not sitting here seven years from now saying, yep, we know everything's approved and now we're implementing it? I mean, that seven um, years is a long time. Yeah, it's, it definitely is a long time, okay. and we've had a lot of everything kind of. Three years of <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been there's been a lot that and and a lot of this took a lot longer the you know developing these pieces took a lot of time for the implementation strategies. Um, I guess what I would say is, well, first of all, we've got a hard deadline. We've got to have something readopted by December of 25. That's 25 or you know whatever uh, 20 months away. But we think, um, as we said, Lots of committees have looked at all these pieces, and uh, it's now kind of getting to where we're bringing it to the public to go through and say, you know, I helped frame out what would be the what the aspirations and goals and strategies are for historic resources. But the historic commission are the ones that worked on it, and they're the experts in the field. And so, this is no longer my plan. Um, and historic resources then came back to the planning commission, and they reviewed it, and they. They made changes, and so it's the Planning Commission's plan now. So there's a lot that's, that's, that's changed, but really it's been developed by a lot of residents of Montpelier. So I don't think when we get down to the nuts and bolts that we're going to be that far off. There may be policy things that everybody's got a difference with. You know, Some people want something more important than others, but I think we're going to be pretty close. So. You know, this is where we need to start working on those those finer points of, you know, what what do you think of where we're going with the historic resources or arts and culture or housing, um, and then we'll make those changes. and And I'm comfortable, confident. As long as you don't get any more floods, we're going to be, you know, there's a lot of resources right now going into pushing this over the finish line, and so um, whether that whether we're ready to go this fall or whether it's in the winter, the public hearing process is going to be coming up. You know, next year, this time, I'm hoping to be sitting in front of the city council and having the council. Because who knows how long they took? Don has been on the council for, was on the council for a long time, and you, these could get to council and take a number of meetings. Um, so, but the hope is that we would have it in front of the council so they've got it and they can make their final decisions based on the public input again. So I guess if we wanted to go through the strategies first, at least uh, I can, if I go through one of the boards, that might give us an opportunity to kind of see how they all fit together if you haven't had a chance to look at them. Or I suggest that if we're going to just look at one, that we look at the housing one rather than just something right. that's more of a priority than so let's just grab. And I'm trying to just keep them in front so the folks online can see them. Not that they're going to be able to read them, but. They can at least see what we're pointing at. So, and if, if anyone wants to, to get closer, you're welcome to. So each one of the storyboards, or these aren't the storyboards, these are the strategies. Storyboards are online. These are the strategies. So each one of these three strategies is all done in the same way. On the top, there's a set of aspirations. So for housing, um, the committee came up with two aspirations. One is that Montpelier will have an adequate supply of safe and flood resilient housing that meets the needs of all current and future residents. And the second aspiration is Montpelier will affirmatively further fair housing in order to protect all people from discrimination, promote economic opportunities, and create a more diverse and inclusive community. Um, so that's the big picture 50,000 foot um, set of aspirations, but 
we've got to break that into a number of pieces if we're going to try to implement it. And so we then, we had various rules for doing this. So um, the aspirations were just meant to be, you know, a vision, vision statement. The goals we really wanted to start to look at, are we looking to maintain things, do, are we doing well with something? In other words, we can maintain how we're doing. Uh, we might increase something, so we might improve something. So we might make small changes. And then there's this idea of transforming. We need to do something completely different. And so we were trying in the goals, you'll notice the first word is always something that's increased the number of homes in Montpelier by a minimum of 30 units. Maintain a mix of housing types, sizes, occupancies and costs. So the maintain helps to tell you that, in our opinion, we have a good mix of housing. And statistically, I think we do. We, we've got a, um, uh, I've worked in communities in the past where 80% of the housing is, 85% of the housing are single family detached housing units on quarter acre lots. And you can find that all around the country. People are patting themselves on the back now because they've said, we're gonna allow a duplex. In our case, we've got a lot of flexible zoning, and we also have a great mix of housing. We do have some single-family detached housing, but we also have condos, we also have townhouses, we have apartments, we have uh, duplexes, quadplexes, so we have a good mix. So that's why that's maintained. Increase the number of homes is simply because we've got a housing shortage. So we recognize we need to increase the number of housing. We're gonna maintain the housing mix. We're gonna improve the safety, health, and flood resiliency of our homes. So it was our opinion that our, our homes don't meet that aspiration yet, that we have safe, healthy, and flood resilient homes. We need to continue to improve that. Peter. Um, I, I realize that because of the flood last summer, flooding is on everybody's mind. But I suggested before, and I suggested again, climate change resiliency. It's not just flooding. You've got we need to have resilient homes, not just about floods. I'm nowhere near a flood, but I, I'm still going to be impacted. And I think that flooding is too specific. Okay. You can say flooding and other aspects. If you want to draw attention to flooding, because everyone will pay attention to that. And other, and other challenges due to climate change. It's changing our, our forests. It's changing our, our gardens. It's changing our transportation. Yep, those are good good comments, that, and we'll look at those. Um, a number of these have been edited and re-edited a number of times, and so that's that's one we sh should have another conversation on. Um, this was all written before the flood, by the way, so that was already on our minds before the, the flooding happened. Um, increase the number of homes that are universally accessible on the first floor. So this gets to uh, kind of ADA. Um, you know we. We had, in the past, we've talked about one of the aspirations that was written in the past was housing for all. We just were going to keep it simple. Housing for all. And that means we've got to think about everybody's housing needs, including um, accessibility. Um, if, if people have a, only a limited, if you uh, have ADA issues, you, you need accessibility issues, then it shouldn't be just for a limited number of housing units. You should be able to visit your friends and family. Um, just because you can live in an uh, accessible unit doesn't mean you're allowed to visit your friends who aren't an accessible unit. So we wanted to have a goal of trying to increase the number of homes that are universally accessible just so we can get more units uh, available and to increase just everybody's ability to participate. Peter. Again, first floor. Why just first floor? The problem with so many of these goals here is that you're thinking about owners, not renters. There's almost no mention of rental apartments. There are, there are, there are buildings that have elevators. There are buildings that, ha that have a chair, chair lifts. Why first floor? Universally uh, accessible. Yep, and, they've had the, and they had a conversation about that. And uh, the issue just comes up with the, the, the cost of, and difficulty of making everything universally accessible. There, there are still cost barriers to that, and requiring second floor accessibility could 
inhibit people from being able to build it's, new it's, units. It's a goal. It's not a requirement. It's a goal. And Go goals can't get as specific as, as requirements. You don't want them to be. But if you if your goal, I, I just think that's having first floor and a goal is like having flood. It's too specific. It, 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 it excludes a whole bunch of people. And if you look at all the goals, there's just one slight mention of renting. But you, any structure or home that's improved includes whoever lives in them, whether you own it or rent it or right. get it for free. <laughs> right. It's the structure we're talking about. No, it isn't. Look at the goals, uh, Donna. You know, look at, if you read all the goals, if, if Mike's going to do it, there's a clear emphasis on, on, on people who own their own, they, who own their building. I, I, I don't think anybody saw it that way because, you know, maintaining mixes of housing types, improving safety and healthy, that, that's not just for single family homes, that's for rentals. Increasing the number of homes that are universally accessible, that's also rental. Yeah, um, so yeah but I, I think, I mean, that was, this meeting, we're also welcoming other ways, I think, to, to express it or, you know, new goals that are suggested. I, I just like to welcome, yeah, suggestions. Yeah. Reframing. Well, the original, I was on the housing uh, task force, and we, we uh, sent in our goals. We use the word rental, affordable, range of incomes, energy efficient, resilient in the face of disasters. None of those words are in there. Yep, and these have all gone through various processes. So we, um, again, there, there was a proposal that was made to the Housing Committee that you were there for. The Housing Committee made changes and the Planning Commission has since made changes as well. So. We'll certainly take all those comments and go back and revisit these and see if we want to go back and, and look at those previous versions. Um, again, we've got different members of the Planning Commission now. Right. Yes? As I, I apologize for this in the beginning of this. Nope. I didn't realize this was happening until I saw it on Facebook. But um, when we say number four, increase the number of houses that are universally accessible, what's the scope of that? I mean, are you, are you talking? private homes? Are you talking city built homes? Are you talking... So we'll get a little bit to that um, in the next, in the next, right when I get through, let me run through this and then hopefully my next part will answer your question. Um, so okay, the, the second question? Yes. Do we, do we maintain metrics on all these today? Uh, so how, how do you know that you're increasing that? We don't we we've got some of them that we can some of them that we can't and we've tried and it's there's been varying opinions on the commission especially over the years as to how much we want to emphasize measurable um, over having the goal um, and then having maybe having metrics as a separate column which we did when we did these online in the tables there was a separate column for the metric that we would use. A couple of them did get built in, like a minimum of 30 homes per year. Um, in other cases, it was left more general in the goal statement and said, let's find measurables afterwards. But we do have some data through the property tax on how many duplexes and condos, as far as the kind of structures we have in town. Sure. But accessibility, we yeah. probably don't have as much no, of a count of, of, of how many accessible units. Um, so the last two, um, the, the last two go to the aspiration B. So these first four really are breaking down how we have aspiration A, and these last two kind of go to aspiration B. So maintain the city's commitment to affirmatively further fair and accessible housing by focusing on areas where needs are not currently being met, and increase support for partners in the development of housing that are not provided by the private market. So these two reflect a lot of the the work that we do through. Uh, with uh, Downstreet or other housing partners to work on, like I said, housing that's not provided by the private market. So affirmatively furthering fair housing is a, it's a catchphrase, it's a requirement for HUD that you'll see. So it is a, a kind of reflecting our statement of uh, what we are trying to do um, as a community so that way we can keep ourselves consistent with those with those goals not only for that 
for the federal reason, but because it's what the city believes in as its policy and its goals. So that's why um, that's why you have that funny wording of affirmatively furthering fair housing. It's it's kind of a funny phrase, but it's a term of art that goes for HUD. That's why we didn't change it to be more reader friendly, I guess. Um, and getting back to the, the other question, so each one of these various implementation strategies that you see here, um, the idea is, and you'll find this you know, as a professional planner, I can go and pick up another community's plan and look at it, and they'll have goals. And if you read the strategies, none of the strategies are implementing the goals. They might be good strategies, but they're not actually reflective of the goals. Um, or you, you know, or vice versa, you might just have things in. So what we wanted to do is have things that very, and when we originally did this, we would have increased the number of housing and we'd have all the strategies. And then we would have this other one, we'd have all the strategies. And some of them duplicated. So when we put this together, we combined like unified development regulations, your zoning regulations, it helps us implement goals one, two, three, five, and six. So the question of uh, if we have a goal, we don't have any strategies, it's not really a goal. I mean, you're not really, it's, there's nothing strategic, you're not really trying to do it. There's no sense putting in a goal if you're not gonna bother putting in the strategies to help implement it. So, Every time you see a goal, there is always at least one implementation strategy. So the question on what are we doing about number four for increasing the number of accessible units, um, it has fit into the, the country club, club master plan because those will all be new units and by law they will have to be ADA. Uh, it is not in the regulations, so we are not requiring it. Um, and we're looking for number four. Number four, ADA accessibility program. We have an ADA accessibility program. We are proposing to amend it. And for many years, the city had an ADA revolving loan fund for accessibility projects. Uh, it was administratively difficult, rarely used, and now lacks funding. The planning department recommends making a program similar to the first time home buyer pro program but with new funding, um, will be. Uh, but new funding will need to be set aside and match uh, existing program already provided by organizations such as Vermont Center for Independent Living. So, we're not requiring people to make their units more accessible, but we wanted to establish a program, um, and there are different ways of implementing things. One being a program, uh, and the idea being, if you needed to or wanted to make your apartment building more accessible, that you could go to Vermont uh, Center for Independent Living, VCIL, and maybe we would have a program that would allow us to match those funds. So if they gave $5,000, we could give $5,000 and make it more cost effective for a landlord to be able to make their units more accessible. So that's the strategy, the primary strategy that was put in place there was to work with that. Now, the reality is there's probably other ones that I could probably come up with. Um, the designated downtown program I could have probably put in here as well. Uh, if you're in the designated downtown, there, uh, it's, it's one of the programs the state offers is um, if you're in the designated downtown, you can get grants to do accessibility. So there are a number of things we could potentially add in another, add in another strategy, because uh, it doesn't look like Actually, designated downtown is here. We should probably add in number four into that as well because there are programs in there. Does that kind of make sense? And then each one of these strategies, so each one of these is a separate one. Um, strategies, we think strategies in five ways. Um, if you don't know what we're doing or we need more information, one strategy can be we need to do a study and figure out what to do. We don't know what to do, we need to do a study. Um, another one is uh, permits. So we need to, uh, we want to require people to do things. So we're gonna require, change our zoning, change some regulations. Uh, another one is programs. Programs are not requirements. Those are things we can, we can give you some money or give you a tax break. We can uh, have various ways of helping people through programs. 
Those usually require money. So that's usually the catch with programs. Um, you've got policies. That's how the city uses its own resources. So um, how we use the city streets, um, how we use city hall. Uh, we may have a goal to be net zero by 2030, which we do. Well, that's all gonna be implemented through policies because we're not asking the public to do anything. That's just me and my coworkers and city council doing our jobs differently. Um, those, that's what policies look at. Um, and then the last one is programs, plans, projects. Pro projects. There we go. Thank you. Projects is the last one. So a project is something we do once. We're only going to build one transit center. So if we got a project, if you've got an issue, sometimes a project is the way you're going to fix it. Um, so and we we do a number of projects around town. So those are the five things, and they're all kind of intermixed in here. Uh, a lot of them for housing probably come down to programs. Um, but that's how we envision things. Um, we're only going to do one country club road, so that's a project. Uh, utility. So just as I'm, just, I'm not going to read these, but I'll just give what the, the actual program is or what the strategy is. So we have country club road. We have utility infrastructure incentive program. Um, and this is recommended to be new. The city actually just did that three, four days, five days ago. Uh, neighborhood Development Area Program, so that's NDA, that's a state program. Unified Development Regulations, Zoning Bylaws, we already do that. Uh, it's talking about amending it though. Housing Marketing Outreach Program, uh, and I believe that's looking at trying to help to get um, more uh, builders to come to town because we, we just don't have enough people to build the housing. Uh, TIF, Tax Increment Finance, Tax Stabilization Programs, um, Montpelier Accessory Dwelling Unit Program, the Designated Downtown Program, the Growth Center Program, those last two are state programs that we participate in. Public-private partnerships for housing. Um, code enforcement, those help the safety. Automatic sprinkler requirements for buildings, that's safety. Sprinkler incentive program, that's for safety. First time home buyer program, that's actually been eliminated, so there's one as Peter's pointing out, we'll have to go through that one. The, the homelessness task force, I think it's technically still in the books, but the homelessness task force isn't going to re-up that one. River hazard area regulations, again, there's, that's for safety. ADA program we talked about. The affordable housing project, so this is a new program. Um, to... Oh, spon just sponsored uh, different, different programs uh, and special ones in particular. The city would like to identify projects to help disadvantaged groups such as refugees, asylum seekers, group homes, persons reintegrating from incarceration and the homeless. Um, we have a fair housing assessment we still need to do. Um, that's, that goes to our plan. That's something we just need to make sure we do periodically to, to evaluate how we're doing. So you do a fair housing assessment to make sure um, somebody independent from outside comes in and evaluates the city, the programs that we do, and all the other pieces to make sure that we're meeting our, our obligations uh, under the Fair Housing Act. Fair Housing Policy and uh, the Housing Trust Fund. So these are all of the strategies that Housing Committee and Planning Commission have come up with. Uh, the list had been much bigger and it gets, you know, we narrowed down. These are the ones that sat there as priorities. Um, and there are other ideas that, that didn't make the cut. So, Peter. Uh, Mike, the, you've got all of these things looking like they're all sort of equivalent. There's no, there's no hierarchy here. There's, no, there's not even any numbers here. It, it's not, this is number one, number two, number three, number four. You, okay, you've got, Country Club Road, right at the top, which that says something, and I think it's important. But then right under it, you've got, what's number two, what's un, right the under it? The Utility Infrastructure Program. Which, which, is a, which is something, which is a small program. You've got things on there that we don't do anymore. I understand you haven't looked at it in two and a half years, but it, I, there, there should be a way of at least grouping them. I think uh, Donna might have been getting at that, I'm not sure. 
grouping them so you've got the most important ones together and, and you start out with them. Uh, this is sort of inchoate, looking at them spread out like this. You used to have it in a spreadsheet, and in a spreadsheet, you could select by priority. So they would list priority-wise, or you could select by cost. So you could, but, but by freezing it here, you've lost the ability to kind of get your arms around it. This is, this is an exhausting list. To, to go through because you, 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 you go from really important things to things we're not even going to do. Would you want to go by priority if you were going to organize them to put all the high priorities together, then all the mediums and then low? I, I think this is up to the Planning Commission. I, I liked the fact that it was in a spreadsheet again. I, 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 I understand that this is visual and colorful and so forth, but the spreadsheet allows the user to make that decision about looking at it in priority, priority order. I, I think, yes, you should have a little vote about what are the most important ones, whether it's because of priority or cost or some combination, and, and, and put those together or maybe separate them out you know, pull out the projects and the programs because they're all smaller. Have the big guy have the big ideas first. I, I don't know. That's for you guys to decide. But some kind of order, if, it, if it's going to be frozen, have it be frozen in a way that is likely, but frozen I mean you can't manipulate it on the spreadsheet, right? Okay. Then have there be some kind of organizer that allows people to not to have to go through the whole thing because by the time you get to the last one you're really tired no that's a good it's a good point um and we can we'll certainly have to decide what would be our organizing factor for doing those you know could we could certainly group them by you know the plans and then the programs and the strategies or we can do them by priority well, you sort of have them there and I like the color, the color ribbon, that the multicolors are there. It keeps reminding you this is relating to many goals. Within your goals, if your goals are a priority, then to me, then all the strategies under them are comparable priorities. So even by color alone, you almost can see yeah. what has the purple and the red. Yeah, and they, the they, when we did these, we didn't, we intentionally went and said we, we weren't trying to prioritize goals, even though they're labeled one through six, it's not that number one was more important than number six. We just, that could. was, we, we could, yes. And that's, that would be, um, that would take another level of, of discussions about how to, how to organize and, and prioritize. I mean, it's, it's not always easy. I mean, I, I could probably have a meeting just on prioritizing which six of these, which, which ones are the most, which one's three, which one's four. Is, this well, one when, no more. You, when you look at the, the city plan and you're trying to spend money or not, how do you do that without going back to the priority of your goals? So at some point, you've got to bite the bullet. Now, if you don't do it, then the council, somebody else will do it, yeah. right? Yeah, and some of this is going to come down to hearing from the public on which ones are, you know, are, how close are we when we've labeled these, which I should have pointed to everyone who hasn't been up close. There's cost, priority, and partners. Um, so we've got players on, on each one of these as to who the primary person is that's working on this. Yeah. Um, so uh, however we, we want, we've got to make sure we've got those also accurate. So if, if we know we've got all these accurate, then it's just a matter of us sitting down and deciding, OK, how are we going to, how are we going to organize these? And <coughs> Uh, it, it, it is, and it is confusing, and we did like and do like the Excel spreadsheets, but that's really not user-friendly yeah. to, the, to, the, to the general public. Um, there's a lot of explaining about the tabs on the bottom and the tabs on the tops, and so we wanted to come up with a different way, and we have a template that we haven't been able to get to work. Uh, John Adams, who is on our commission, had a way of taking, the reason why they're all in Excel is because we could combine all the Excels and then there would be a searchable way that people could go in to be able to go through and say, show me all the ones that, you know, as Peter said, whatever, show me all the high priorities or show me all of the programs 
or show me all the high priority programs that are done with the Planning Commission. And it would be a searchable database that could work. It had two issues. One was, we haven't actually gotten that program to work. The second issue was, uh, we still had to have static uh, strategies so that way they could be usable in Act 250. So we have to have this. We might end up, if this works, we might end up with both. Uh, the searchable piece as well as the static piece. I think you should. The, the tricky part is making sure that everything is identical because nothing can change. Uh, you know, we go in and fix this one and this one, we've got to fix it on the other one. So we'll probably get everything okay first, and then when we're all done, make the searchable database so that way it's, because once it's done, it's fixed and it locks in. <laughs> so among the public, do you want the public to give you input to priorities of goals? Yeah, if people have, have thoughts about what some of our things are, um, and you know, as you said, maybe adding the timeline, we'll, we'll talk about that. Maybe it makes a difference, because some of these things, this fair housing policy, Kevin and I, Kevin hasn't even been with us for a while, these were things we were working on. We wanted to have a fair housing policy um, and really ha have a nice, clean policy for city council to adopt. We don't technically have an adopted policy by the city council on fair housing. It's a, it's, I actually think these got crisscrossed, so I'm gonna have to double check on those. Uh, make sure we got a note on that. So the cost and the priority are backwards for the housing policy. Um, because it's a low cost, high priority item. Because it's just adopting it. In this case, it says it's a high cost, so I'm going to have to double check to make sure that all of these match up. Um, but isn't that a thread that runs through everything? That's like, you know, you're going to do all these projects with fair housing projects. So some are like it's more policy than actual projects. So we. We do fair housing, and we act in that way, but we haven't officially adopted a policy. And that was one we wanted to work with the Fair Housing Commission to come up with that document you see, whereas, dot, 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 whereas, dot, 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 whereas, dot, dot, dot. Therefore, the city council hereby adopts a policy of this. And therefore, we've got something we can really stick on the wall that when we, when we cross our own line, People can point to and say, that's not our policy. Our policy is this, because we adopted that policy. We don't have very many of those adopted policies. We do have a handful of them that have come through. But we wanted to have that for fair housing. Well, the fair housing team seemed to go under the Social Justice Committee actually more than the Homeless Task Force. Probably, yes. Yep, that's a good recommendation. So. I would just like to hear people's uh, priorities for these goals, if this is what we're talking about, you know. <laughs> I'm wondering if everyone has even internalized the goals or if you kind of need to get a closer look at it. I think it would be good to be able to get out no. and look around and see yeah. the story boards. So I would like to hear what everyone thinks of these goals and if there's a priority ranking for you personally or what you think is better, best for Montpelier, you know. Um, so I don't know if anybody has. I don't know, what, what is on your agenda? Have you, have you explained enough so that it would be appropriate to start writing I hope, I hope so. That, I just want to be able to go through so as you look at the other boards, you kind of know the same thought. Okay, I can see the aspirations, I can see the goals, I can see how these, these play. So yeah, um, the arts and culture, that one came a lot out of the public art master plan that was adopted in 2019, 2020. So that one, for anyone who was part of that process, you should see a lot of similarities, a lot of things that said, hey, we should be doing this. So that's where that came out of. And historic resources, a lot of that really is from work that Historic Preservation Commission was working on. Well, sometimes it helps just to, uh, for myself, just pick my top three out of the six you have there uh, versus putting them all in order. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, anything, and like we said, any, anything that comes out um, that comes to mind, like I said, the timeline. We had the partners. I think there was a different line that was also in there. There were two lines, and I, and I wonder if the one other was one. was the partners, the other was a per, the principal um, player. The principal player, I, I would have probably wanted to see the principal player. Some of these, these were developed um, 
last week while I was on vacation. They didn't get to proof them until after I got back. So, um, so you've got some principal players and you've got some partners, a mix of them. And I think you, you, if you only, can only have one, it should be who is primarily uh, responsible. Main players might incorporate both of them. So. Yeah, we we wanted to make sure we put the thought just behind it. We wanted to have that principal players in there because if if we don't, if you have goals and strategies and nobody's actually assigned to it, then nobody you, you can't actually go back. Like I said, just there's always you got to be able to go back and say that was Mike. That was that was that was on your plate to to get done, yeah. and it didn't get done. And there may be a good reason for it, but if it didn't get done. Well, just to me, there's a difference in the word partners. That's my hang up. Is that you have staff as partners and you have other entities as partners. And I see other entities as partners. Versus there are headings that could include both staff and partners, uh, non staff partners. Well, the spreadsheet had both. Well, whatever. Yeah. That may be just keeping people's minds more inclusive to. So, yeah, take, take some time, take a look, read through them, and see, see what you think. And like we said, the, the Planning Commission is here to answer questions. I'm here to answer questions. Um, and this is just the first half. The other half are the storyboards online, which might be a little bit more tricky. We'd have, we've got computers getting fired up, and I could fire up another computer. I see a couple other folks have computers. But um, if there are certainly issues, like they're not very readable, um, then we're going to have to work on, I'll, I'll have to go back to SE group and either look at the sizes of the fonts or... What words do I look for to find storyboards? I found a plan for the storyboards. Uh, so... so... I just have to think to come down. I'm probably going to go ahead and go into this. Yeah. 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 Y